way the, the harp will pick out particular notes, you will be able to set those strings vibrating and causing the air around them to ripple with vibrations which reach the ears of the listener. Now somebody who does not know how to play the harp will start uh, flicking a few strings, pulling a few strings and just produce noise. The difference between noise and music is that noise has no meaning. That's why noise is so disturbing to us, oppressive, it just obliterates our ability to find meaning and purpose in our environment. The more noise, the more we can't uh, deal with it. A music takes the waves of the air and turns them into beautiful vibrations, soothing vibrations, vibrations that stimulate the right parts of the human brain and the human mind and the human heart, that open the heart, that enable us to deal with things that without music we couldn't deal with at all. Lovers of opera will know that the heights of opera are when uh, the, the music completely sweeps everybody into uh, some new mood that the composer is trying to create. And holy music is taking these airwaves and turning them into vibrations that bring joy, that bring attachment to God. And here I'd like to share with you one of the secrets of song which can be learned from two words in the Hebrew language used to describe song. One is zemer and one is shiv. And both of these two Hebrew words have very interesting connotations. The word zemer is, root, is related to a Hebrew root that is agricultural. When you have a tree that you are cultivating, you have to cut off some of the branches in order to let the tree provide sufficient energy to the remaining branches to grow beautifully and produce beautiful fruits. And in Hebrew, the root for pruning the tree is the zamer. The zamer is to cut off the dead wood, to cut off the unproductive branches, the excess branches, to make the tree flourish and healthy. And that's in fact why the first part of our prayer in the morning is all zemirot. We recite in the shacharit, the psukeh de zimra, the verses of song, which help us to wake up from our night's sleep. They cut off the dead wood. They cut off what needs to be removed as we get through the service towards the goal, which is the deeper and deeper connection with God through the saying of the Shema and saying of Ishmael Yisrael. The Pesukeh de Zimra, the verses of song at the beginning, are designed to clean the air, to spread the vibrations of holiness, the vibrations of devotion, this is particularly felt in the Edot Amidra that uh, until today will sit as a community singing the Psuke de Zimra, particularly on Shabbat, so very beautifully with special manginot, special melodies which help to cleanse the air and the synagogue to cleanse the air, the ruach, the spirit of the congruence and bring everybody into a state of readiness for the great heights of the Kriyat Shema and of the Shemona So this is one element of song. It is related to what I spoke about before, the concept of purifying the air. Purifying the air by choosing the positive vibrations, the good sounds, the good spirit. And the musician has to distinguish between the good notes and the bad notes. So how does the musician build the song? Well here, the other word for song in Hebrew, the shir, has an interesting relationship with another Hebrew word, which is found in the Mishnah, the Mishnah of Shabbos, which is dealing with the carrying from domain to domain on the Shabbat, and enumerates many, many different things that may or may not be permitted to carry on Shabbat. And the Mishnah discusses the chains on animals for farmers who had animals, and they have to know, can they take the animal out of the, uh, the farm, and if, if so, in which way? And the word for the chain is the sher. We have the Hebrew word shar sheret, is a chain that is made of links. 
And this is really what a song does. A song provides links. We all know today how important links are. The whole of internet works off links, where you get to one place and you can link with somewhere else, and somewhere else sometimes it just blows your mind how far you can, away you can get. But this will help to throw light on the concept of the Shira as we find it in our holy writings. The first great Shira that we find in the Torah is the Shira Hayam, the eternal song of the sea. Just after the Israelites have come from Egypt and as they are trying to get away to the Holy Land, they come to the impassable sea and behind them are the Egyptians pursuing them and God does the impossible at precisely that moment in the history of the world Unlike any, any other sea, this sea splits and Israel are able to go through on the dry land and when the Egyptians come running after them, the sea crashes in on them and they're drowned and the Israelites go out of the sea on the dry land. Could anything be a more striking proof that HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Hashem, the unified creator of all worlds, controls every detail of this world, controls every detail of nature, controls every detail of history, so that we see that events are not random, nothing is by chance, it's not possible that the splitting of the sea precisely at that moment was chance, if so it was a, a one in a trillion improbability that the sea should do something that has never happened before nor afterwards except in remarkable circumstances like a tsunami. Is it possible that the tsunami really comes exactly at the moment that God decrees? Yes, that is the answer. That is the answer. And when you know that everything in creation is actually under the control of one God, it means that everything is connected. Everything is linked. And this is why the Shia is a concept of linkage, that everything is linked together, that events are not random, they're not without meaning, everything is with meaning. And the great Shira of Crossing of the Red Sea, Shirat Ayam, which is recited in the synagogue every morning throughout the year, is the song of providence, the song of Hashkacha, the song that teaches us that God controls everything, that everything is linked and therefore everything has meaning. <coughs> and this is what enables us to live. How can we look through suffering? How can we look through pain? How can we look through hurt? How can we look through the, the, uh, the war of attrition that is being fought against us and has been fought against us for centuries and millennia? without feeling that it all has some kind of purpose and some kind of meaning we would just sink under we couldn't survive but when our prophet Moses comes and teaches us that everything in creation is linked everything has meaning and everything has purpose it's easier to bear and here is the secret of David Amalek the secret that David Amalek teaches us purpose teaches us that our lives are not random. Our lives are with a purpose, with a goal, and that everything that happens, including the battles and the struggles and the attacks, all have meaning, all have purpose. Perhaps this was how he was trying to heal Shaul. In the parasha of Zohar Es Asher Osof Amolek, remember what Amolek did to you when you came out of Egypt? The Torah says, Asher Korofo Baderef. Literally, Amolek attacked and he happed upon you, he chanced upon you on the road. Israel knew where they were going. They were going to, to, to from <coughs> Egypt, from slavery, to the land of Israel, to freedom, to a holy Torah country. And Amalek attacked them on the way. Asher Korachor. Amalek attacked with Mikre, with 